as you can see, we are in Chicago and we are at ACC 16. A number of late-breaking clinical trials this time around that have been quite interesting. I would like to talk to you about one of them, Thyroidice, and this is with uh, Dr. Carl Heinz Cook, who is a professor of cardiology at St. George's Hospital in Hamburg, Germany. Uh, very nice place. I've been to your city a couple of times. Let's talk about Thyroidice. First off, I love the title for this particular one. What Thank were you. you setting out to do? Actually, it's the largest uh, catheter ablation study in patients with AT fibrillation and it is comparing two technologies and two strategies. Now, the gold standard of catheter ablation uh, in atrial fibrillation is radiofrequency ablation. So it means that we are applying heat to the tissue by a focal point-to-point -point ablation. So on one side you have heat and on the other side you have a focal ablation. Now, this is compared with a new technology which is the cryoballoon. So in contrast to radiofrequency, the cryoballoon is freezing the tissue, and that's why we used ice. And in contrast to the radiofrequency catheter, it's delivered via a balloon. So it's a single step delivery towards the tissue. A major difference between point to point, which is very complex, very complicated, takes a lot of time. And on the other side, you have a single step device, which can isolate the pulmonary veins with a single shot. So in this particular case, how many patients did you look at and what did you find? We looked into 765 uh, uh, patients that were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to either radiofrequency or to cryoballoon. And it turned out that the efficacy and the safety endpoint was not different between the two groups. So the study was powered to be non-inferior with a event rate of uh, 30% and a non-inferiority margin of 10% and actually the true event rate at the end of the trial was 35% so we were very close to what we had uh, uh, powered the study for and therefore I think the data of the study are very realistic and hopefully will change a little bit clinical practice over the next couple of years. So what's next? I mean, now that you've done this, are you going to continue following these patients? Yeah, I think there are two important issues, what we would like to see. First of all, that more patients can be treated with this rather simplified approach, because until now, it's only 4% of people with AT fibrillation that are undergoing catheter ablation. And that number is very small, and we believe the number is so small because radiofrequency ablation by point to point is a very sophisticated and difficult procedure to do. Number two, that we would like to look into different patient populations. Now we looked into paroxysmal AT fibrillation. And we would like to transfer this approach also to patients with more chronic forms of AT fibrillation, such as persistent AT fibrillation, and compare how patients do with both technologies if we treat them um, with the same endpoint recurrence of AT fibrillation. What's the time difference between the procedure that you're doing and the standard approach, the point-to-point? -point? Actually, uh, it turned out in the study, in the fire and ice study, that all the investigators were very experienced investigators for both technologies. Nevertheless, there was a time saving of 20 minutes using the cryo balloon versus the radiofrequency technology. And this implemented that for the cryo balloon, we had two applications per vein. Even when the vein was isolated, we added a bonus application. Now, clinical practice today tells us that we don't have to do this. Now, if that would be implemented in the study, we probably would save another 10 minutes. So in total then, the time saving could be 30 minutes per procedure, which probably would allow you, if you do three procedures per day, you would save one and a half hours and would allow you to do a first patient in the future. And it's probably a little less stressful to do. Oh, it's much more, uh, less stressful because, I mean, just push the device, the balloon, towards the vein, freeze it, let it sit there for three minutes. You don't even have to touch it. Once it's frozen, it sits there in the tissue, and it makes life very comfortable in contrast to the stepwise 
radio frequency approach. Well, congratulations. And uh, if you do additional research on this, come back and talk to us again, because this is an interesting uh, approach for, for those of us who read CardioSource World News uh, Interventions, where I'm executive editor, Rick McGuire.